everyone, Insomnia from UnrealTech.net at DivisionalBlenderTech.com here. Today in our Creating Custom Vehicles in UE4 series, we'll be creating a simple vehicle that drives and steers with a rear wheel drive, only two wheel drive, but steers and front wheels um, with axles and wheels and a body using nothing but physics constraints. This video will give you an idea of how to get more stable physics, what what physics constraints can do in blueprints only with no code, um, how much of the physics uh, SDK and API is actually, is actually, um, is actually um, exposed to blueprints. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll lead you towards building uh, your own cars and vehicles. So in the last video, we looked at hitches and such, but now we're gonna be looking at something that can actually pull that that's not a regular uh, wheeled vehicle class. So um, a few things we're gonna get out of the way first. And remember, create your way. So you're gonna need a model of a vehicle. Um, doesn't really matter what it is. I just found this Cadillac on blendswap.com. Um, you want the pivot point, that's the orange one here in Blender where the gizmos are at. Um, and you can do that in Blender, Control Shift C. I can actually screencast keys. You can go Control Shift C and then origin to center of mass. I find that makes things a little bit more stable. If your car isn't uh, mirrored perfectly, um, then just try to guess where the center of mass would be and make sure that it's down the center line of your car. So that would be um, this, oh, I'm in face mode, that would be um, this line right here. Make sure it's down the center line of your car. Um, Cause if it's off center, uh, you can run into issues. Um, you want it to be real world dimensioned. Make sure you're in, working in centimeters and make sure everything is zeroed out before you export. Make sure everything's zero, zero, zero and scale is either zero in Maya or one in Blender. And then you'll export that. Make sure the nose is pointing in the positive X direction. So that direction the X arrow is pointing in. It's kind of hard to see there. Um, make sure the nose is pointing in that direction, of course, and Z up. The other thing you're gonna need and what needs a bit more detail is a wheel. So we have this nice wheel here. Now it, it does help to create a, um, if I was to duplicate this and scale on the Y negative one, it, it is nice to have a mirrored wheel, um, but it's not, you don't totally need it. Um, It'll work just fine without, it just it will save you a little bit of work. And sometimes it can be, I mean, if you're going for total physics stability, having the mirrored wheel is essential if it's not just a basic cylinder. As you can see, I've put mine to my center of mass and that puts it right, right in the center vert. So I am, I'm good to go in that case, in the center of mass. If your wheel is offset for some reason, make sure that the pivot point is at the center of the wheel, of the rotation. Measure it, grab a vert, um, you know, turn on vert snapping, grab a vert, and make sure it's the exact diameter of your wheel. Um, as you can see, I have 37.5 centimeters. If I go 37.5 times two, I get 75. If I look here, my wheel is 75 centimeters um, in diameter. So my radius would be 37.5. <laughs> Now, the funny looking shape that we had before, this is gonna be our custom collision. So how I've created this, actually, I'm, let me redo it just to show you guys. So you take your wheel, and this is how I do it. Um, it needs to be a circle primitive. It'll be a primitive in Maya, and in Blender, it's just a circle. So what I do is I, um, I select a, something that I know um, is centered right on that pivot point. So I know that this ring, um, I know its center is right at the, exactly where the pivot points at so i go shift s i move my cursor to selected and then as you'll see it's right where the pivot point is at no matter how much i zoom in it's oh, actually it's a hair off oh well that's not noticeable but it should be right at the pivot point and then what i do is um i add a mesh circle again make sure it's a circle and in my circle primitive it has 
has to be and then we're gonna hit f6 we are gonna rotate along the x-axis 90 degrees by the way your wheel its rotation should be um its axis of rotation should be the y-axis um and then going back i i do the more vertices the better i like to do powers of two so stock is 32 i like to do 64 just a little bit better and your radius obviously is going to be 75 divided by two and so that'll give us our um our collision primitive but all we need to do is grab along the y i like to go to the widest point of my wheel and then extrude along the y to the widest point on that side and that's going to be what's used as your collision primitive um let's just take the normals and make sure they're facing outside and then take the rotation and zero it out and we also need to zero out its location as well. That's probably why it was off. We want to move it. Actually, we want to undo that. And rather, we want to apply location. So change its pivot point. But that doesn't matter because it's just collision. But now you need to name your collision primitive or your collision mesh so that is ucx if you're using a different shape which you shouldn't be for wheels um there's guidelines online if you just search custom collision and real engine so ucx then the name of the mesh which in this case is wheel if you see here in the outliner it's wheel make sure your data your mesh data is also named the same i'll show you that in a second wheel and then zero one if you're working with more than one collision primitive you would go with zero 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 one zero two so on but if you only have one you call it zero one so the mesh data needs to be named the same um here it's called circle for all the vert data the mesh data um so you need to rename that to be the same and your mesh in this case wheel its mesh data by default will be whatever you created it from let's say we created it from a cube make sure that's renamed to wheel then yeah make sure um everything's zeroed out so zero 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 one 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 or in my scale will be zero 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 um my collision primitive zeroed out and then you can export that as one whole object so once that's done we can start our project so i'm going to use the uh advanced vehicle template just because it has some starter content i'm going to add starter content we're going to create that project in 410 So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to our content browser and go to content. I'm going to create a folder called blueprints. I'm going to set its color, right click, set color to green. And then I'm going to make a folder called meshes. And I'm going to set that color, new color to yellow. Perfect. All right. So, uh, First things, go to edit project settings and under collision, we need two collision object channels. So make hit a new object channel. The first one's gonna be bodies for car bodies and default response block. And then a new object channel, wheels. That'll be for wheels, default response block. So make those two. And then under physics, um, what you can do, you have max sub steps. So we want to up that to 16 and that, um, that basically means it'll do 16 physics calculations in the time it takes to render one, uh, render frame. So that's the only two things that we need to, uh, change. So you can close out of that. Um, next we are going to want to set our game mode to, uh, advanced vehicle advanced game mode and expand selected game mode you can get this window under window world settings um take the default pawn class and clear it set it to none and in the world outliner search for start and delete all the player starts because we're going to put our pawn in ourselves and then go ahead and find the advanced vehicle and delete it so now when we hit play we have nothing to move around with or anything so that's what we want so first of all, let's import our meshes. So into our meshes folder, let's import our body first of all. So that's just stock settings that you use to import that. And since this has 2000 tries, it's gonna take a minute. So I'll pause the movie. I don't wanna 
import the materials, but otherwise everything else is fine. Auto generate collision, yes. So you import that, I'll let it do its thing for a minute. There we are, that's done. So you can take a look at it. Make sure your collision uh, that it generates is not all wonky. It's not gonna go into the ground or anything. Make sure it just envelops the car. So I'm just gonna set the materials. There's like 25, just so it's not looking all gray. All right, there we have a nice looking uh, body and it's uh, center of mass is right there. We're good to go, perfect. So we'll save that and we will import our wheel. Now this is where it gets different. We don't want to auto generate collision because we made our collision primitive. So import. And if it worked, you will notice that you have your model, but that your collision mesh became just these blue lines that become green when you select them, AKA a collision primitive. Now again, the more verts you use for a wheel, the better it'll roll, but obviously um, at a performance hit. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to set the materials for this really quickly and you do need to make the, uh, the, the filled cylinder from a cylinder primitive, not from a circle primitive, from a cylinder primitive if you want a collision on the sides. So there we have, I'm going to save that. Now we can get to actually creating our vehicle. So let's go to blueprints, right click, let's create a blueprint class. Let's make a player controller. So BP. Uh, player controller we're gonna need a blueprint class pawn so this is gonna be our BP simple car we're gonna need a blueprint class all classes search for HUD we're gonna need a HUD select BP HUD and we're gonna need a user interface widget widget HUD First thing, let's save them all. Let's go into BP HUD. Let's go on event, begin, play in the event graph. Hold down P and click. You want to create widget of class, widget HUD, and then you want to take the return value and add to viewport. Simple as that. So that'll display our HUD. Um, let's create our HUD really quickly. So widget HUD, uh, let's take one block of text and two block of text and we'll do just that for now uh, make sure both of them are sized to content the second one is going to be uh, engine torque and the top one is going to be current gear and let's bind create binding we'll do get gear get gear text and let's take the return value and format text. And we will format, um, we'll go current year, uh, colon, space, open and close curly brackets, and then put gear in the middle of that. And you'll see it gives you an input. And then we're gonna want to get player pawn and take the return value and cast to BP simple car. And, um, Usually I do, yeah, we can probably do a peer cast. So just right click and convert to peer cast and we'll just save that like that. So let's uh, duplicate that and go get torque engine text and let's open up that, uh, that function and just change current gear to engine torque. And if you want, you could add something like uh, Newton meters or something at the end and you can change gear if you want to torque if you were so inclined so yeah let's uh, compile and save that for, and we'll get back to it in our BP player controller let's quick create a camera controller so all we want to do is uh, mouse X and mouse Y so I'll show you how to make a camera controller in 30 seconds or less. So on mouse X, we want to add yaw input and mouse Y, we want to add pitch input. Compile and save. Let's go to our pawn. Let's uh, add a component, static mesh. Let's call this body. This will be our color body. Let's drop it on top of default scene root so it becomes the, becomes the new root. Then let's add a spring arm. And then on top of the spring arm, let's add a camera. 
So make sure that's parented to the camera. So we'll do it just like that for now. Uh, take your spring arm, enable use pawn control rotation, go to event graph and go uh, wheel down and wheel up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down control and drag in the spring arm. We want to get length, get, get length. We wanna get target arm length and we want to set target arm length. So when wheel down is pressed, we set target arm length. And when wheel up is pressed, we set target arm length. Make sure target's filled in. So we're gonna, um, on wheel down, we're gonna subtract. I find something about 30 works well. And on wheel up, we're gonna add, so plus. We're gonna go 30. So plug that into target arm length. Compile, save, let's drag our pawn into the level. And for now, it'll just be a camera. I'm just gonna drag it up out of the ground. I'm gonna save the map and let's set our game mode. So uh, HUD class is gonna be BP HUD. Player controller is gonna be BP player controller and we're good, so I'm gonna save that. Hit play and you'll see now that we can, we can move around once we right click using just our mouse and we can zoom in and we can zoom out. So that'll become more apparent. Then we have our GUI too. That'll become more apparent once I uh, actually get a pawn going here. So what we need to do is in our viewport, or let's go to our viewport rather, and turn off real time because I'm recording. Uh, our player controller we can close, so, and our HUD too. So in BP Simple Car, let's start creating our car. So our body, we need our mesh. So let's go Cadillac body. So there's our body. It's pointing in the X direction. Everything's good to go. I'm gonna close the materials here. Make sure it's movable. Make sure the scale is always one, one, one. Once you start playing with the scale of things, um, then things start to go wonky with physics. Phys physics, as in phys X, and the physics system does not like things that are scaled um, out of, or in game. Um, if you need to do any scaling, do it in your 3D image editor. And we want to simulate physics. Uh, the mass in kilograms is fine. If you find your car is a little too bouncy, you can always up that. Um, and we want to change the collision presets. So we want to change this um, to custom. We want um, to change the object type to bodies. And then we want to um, block everything except bodies and wheels. So that, that way um, the wheels don't actually collide with it and cause physics errors. Um, our spring arm, as you can see, needs to be quite a bit longer. So let's set it up to be about 900. Let's give it a, actually it'll be, uh, let's see here, negative 20. Yeah, it's not gonna matter because it's inheriting the rotation. But we can give it some Z value, like 100 maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Compile, save. Let's bring this down, it looks like, play. Oh, I see why it's not working properly. We need to set this. Go to details with your uh, pawn selected. Auto possess player, player zero. Now when we hit play, we have our car. You can see it fell to the ground because it's simulating physics and we can move around. I can zoom out and in. Oh, I, I made it the wrong way on the, on the uh, camera controls. We need to invert that. So this one goes down here. This one goes up here. Compile, save, play. So now when I mouse wheel up, I zoom in. And when I mouse wheel out, I zoom out. In, out, perfect. All right, so now we need to create our wheels. So let's add a static mesh and let's go wheel front left. Just start with one, it'll make your job much easier. Um, so we're gonna obviously choose wheel. We need to simulate physics, make sure it's movable, make sure it's scale is one. Um, the mass is fine for now. Go to collision. We want to set this to custom. We want to set the object type to wheels and we want to block everything except for bodies and wheels we want to ignore. Now we need to find out where to place it. So I find this easiest just to go to top to start. And you know this is, um, you can go to lit, alt four. Um, so we know it needs to be up here somewhere. 
And then you can uh, eyeball it the rest of the way. So perspective needs to obviously come over. Doesn't matter where it is as long as the other one is inverse to it. Negative 40. I used negative 40 last time. Maybe let's go negative 50. I recorded this video already and I had it crash on me. I think it needs to go back. Let's go in increments of five. I think it needs to go back five. It's looking a little bit like a low rider. All right. Negative. We'll go negative 50 this time. So that's wheel front left. Let's uh, duplicate it and go wheel front right. So FR. So this one needs to be rotated 180 degrees. Now, usually all you would do to get this in the perfect location is just take your Y and turn it from a negative to a positive or the other way around. So I just go 90 and that would place it in the exact mirrored location because my model's mirrored and that's where my pivot point is. But because my pivot point on my wheels isn't in the exact center, it's gonna be off a little bit. So I think I found it needed to come out like five or 10 centimeters. So I'm gonna set it to 100. I think that's what I used last time. And um, it also helps to uh, keep your front and rear wheels at the same position. They don't need to be, but it just helps because now we can do the rear. So we're gonna duplicate uh, wheel front right and we're gonna go wheel rear right. And so all we need to do now is move along the x-axis so that it stays in line and just figure out where in the rear it needs to go. So it needs to go in this little compartment here and it actually looks like it needs to come in. So that's what I just told you essentially goes out the window. Um, so yeah, right about there, looks good to me. And obviously the wider it is, the more stable it'll be. Now let's do the left. So I'm gonna duplicate the front left and I'm gonna go wheel rear left. And I'm gonna take, oops, I forgot to call this one. Oh, why do I have front left, front right, rear right. I duplicated it twice, my bad. All right, so all, all you need to do here to find, you want the exact same value usually. So rear right, um, my X value is negative 210. So I'm gonna use that for rear left, negative 210. And boom, it's right in the position it needs to be. So that's perfect, I'm happy. Um, yeah, that looks, oh, it looks like it needs to come in a little bit too. So let's bring it in 10 units too. All right, so I'm happy with that. Maybe I could bring the front wheels in 10 units too, and then I, they would have the same value. Who thought of that? Someone's smart, obviously. So they'll have a uh, Z value of negative 50. And the left has a Y value of negative 80 and the other side has a value of 90. It should be 80, but because my wheels aren't centered, it had to be a little bit different because these are rotated 180. And now a very important thing to check, make sure all of your locations, if possible, um, are perfectly zeroed out. So what I mean by that is that decimal places are decimal zero. So unless you need like half a unit or whatever, but it helps to have everything at a perfect zero because sometimes the physics engine will go a little wonky and you'll get a weird number like that. 179.9999885. So I want 180 perfect. So just make sure that uh, that's set up on all your static meshes. I'm gonna save. Um, now we need to set up our um, our physics constraint because right now if we did this, we're just gonna have wheels yeah, kind of holding up the body. That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> there you have it, a perfect car. <laughs> But um, yeah, they're essentially just gonna fall over. We need physics constraints to hold everything together. So go ahead and add component and search for physics and add a physics constraint. So I'm gonna go WH for wheel. And since this is rear wheel drive, I'm gonna go uh, rear left. And again, I'm just gonna start with one, whoops, rear left. So the important thing to do um, is to make sure that your physics constraints are at the same transform as the wheel they're dealing with. So wheel rear left should be the same as wheel rear left. So negative 210, negative 80, negative 50. So negative 210, negative 80, negative 50. So it's right there, right there. So they're both in the exact same position, very important. Now we need to constrain it. So component name one is gonna be body 
So as you see, it constrains it to the body and component name two is gonna be wheel rear left. And you'll see it turns blue there. And you can see the constraint line right there. Um, it can work also to create sockets and then to parent everything to sockets, but uh, it really depends. Cause when it comes to steering, you can't do that. And steering's a bit more complicated. We want to disable collision cause we don't want these two bodies to collide even if we disabled it anyway. Um, the linear motion we want locked. Now, if you did want suspension, you would go limited in the Z motion and your linear limit size would be how many centimeters of suspension travel you have from its origin point right here. But I'm gonna lock it just to keep things simple because this is simple car. Um, now, our angular motions, we wanna lock everything except for its axis of rotation, which is the Y axis. So if you, if you uh, hover over, you'll notice that is angular swing to motion. So we want that to be free so it can completely swing. Um, then we want uh, an angular orientation drive and velocity drive and this will basically um, kind of fake animate your wheels and help um, help any torque and any sort of calculations that you have to do in the physics this will just help with it if you read over and hold control alt it tells you a lot more about them so what we do want to do is we just want to set their strength to 500,000 and max angular force leave it zero and you can leave it at slurp because we don't have a gimbal lock to worry about. So that is fine just like that. That wheel is now constrained. We can compile, save and play. So that wheel is now, as you can see, perfectly constrained. If I uh, go ahead and play here in the play and editor, um, I can eject, I can grab this. And as you can see, that wheel is gonna roll perfectly. You can see it uh, rolling there. While the other ones obviously have uh, fallen off and we can kind of probably hit them as well stuff, <laughs> but um, that wheel is rolling perfectly. So I'm quite happy with that. So that is working. So now we just need to do rear right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate this since the settings are all good. And we're going to go wheel rear right. So we just need to set it to uh, wheel rear right. Um, transform so negative 210 and z negative 50 will be the same but a y of 90 so i'm going to put a y of 90 and then we just need to change the component name 2 to wheel rear right and everything else should be the same since this is just basic wheels on the back so we hit play our rear wheels are now perfectly um as you can see they're rolling you can see it nicely in there perfect now when it comes to the front wheels if you just want to drive straight that's all you need to do but we need to steer and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated we need to add a component and let's add a cylinder and this is going to be our um i call it an axle just to keep things simple but this is going to be like this is going to be what we steer on and the reason for this i'm just going to call this axle front left I'm gonna duplicate one and go axle front right. The reason we do this is because, um, and I'll show you, if we were to take a wheel, we need, um, we'll go to its physics one actually, um, wheel rear left, and we'll do it on the right one too. So our angular swing one motion is the Z axis. So that allows it to obviously rotate as if it was steered like, uh, it's constrained so you can't see um, we'll do it on the front wheel. So that is if it was being steered. So we would need to obviously free that axis up. But what that's going to do is it's going to leave two axes free at all times and our wheel's going to get wobbly. And so I'll show you what happens when we set um, the Z axis to free. So I'll do that on both, both of our rear wheels. So compile, save, play. So as you can see, they're kind of going a little bit wonky and that other one's going all over the place. So that's obviously not going to work, but there is a solution and it's very easy. We simply leave this to have one axis free and then we have uh, it constrained to our axle or steering, whatever you want to call it. And then that has one axis free. So each of them can only move in one axis and things don't go wonky. It makes the steering simulation a little harder but it makes it 
physically accurate and proper. So what we need to do is we need to make our axles have the same transform as our wheels and as our physics constraints also. So I'm going to set these wheel front left, wheel front left, or axle front left, wheel front left. So 125, negative 80, negative 50. So 125, negative 80, negative 50. And then front right is going to be 125, um, 90, and negative 50. And let's just double check that. Wheel front, or axle front right, wheel front right, 125, 90, negative 50. Perfect. And if you want, you can even rotate at the same amount too, but the rotation doesn't matter in this case since uh, since it's not going to well since it's not going to be directly constrained to that. Now it does make things hard to see. You can set it to hidden if you want, um, but we want it hidden in game for sure. So make sure I should have done just one first. Make sure both of them are hidden in game. We definitely don't want to see that. Another thing, this is lower than our wheels, obviously. So we need to make sure it does not collide with the environment. But you also need the proper um, collision setup or else it won't simulate physics. That's the other thing I forgot. Make sure simulate physics is checked off. So what we need to do for the collision presets is go to custom, leave the object typed how it is, and then just set it to ignore world static and world dynamic, ignore bodies and ignore wheels. So we'll do that again on the front left. Collision presets, custom, object type, leave alone. It shouldn't be physics body. Oh yes, it is physics, physics body. And then set it to ignore world static and world dynamic. That is like the terrain and stuff and bodies and wheels. So that way it won't collide. Um, so that's our axle. So now we need to create our physics constraints. So I'm gonna duplicate wheel rear left and I'm gonna call this AX for axle uh, front left. So I need to set its transform 125, negative 80, negative 50. We know that's the right transform because the gizmo is not moving. We need to set um, the component name two, however, to axle front left. So you can see it's constrained to that. And then we need to set up our wheel for front left. So let's duplicate that. Sorry, before I go, um, we need to lock the uh, Y axis and we need to free the Z axis. So that way this thing can rotate. You won't see it because it's a cylinder, but it can rotate along the blue axis here. It can move in a circle like that and it's constrained in every other one. So that's how we allow it to steer. So we have that one, but we also need one for the wheel. So I'm actually going to set that to invisible just to help see this. So we'll set it to non-visible. So let's duplicate that axle front left uh, constraint and we'll go wheel front left. I'm just going to save. So again, we're going to lock everything, but we're going to free up the Y axis because we're going to allow it to spin from the axle to the wheel along the y-axis and that's the green one obviously and again make sure it's transform is the same on that the axle whoops wrong axle so your constraint the axle the axle constraint the wheel constraint and the wheel make sure the transforms are all the same so for wheel front left we just need to again make sure your um you've got the right axis angular swing two motion that's the y make sure you lock the z make sure everything else is locked unless you're trying to make some uh uh suspension simulation make sure your angular motor is all set up and just change the component name two to wheel front left and component name one to axle front left axle front left i think i spelled that wrong but oh well so it'll look like that so the axle is constrained to the wheel in the y axis and the axle is constrained to the body um with the z axis free so um now we just need to duplicate that for the right so Take your axle, make sure it's at the transform for the right, it is. So we're going to take the axle constraint and we're going to duplicate it and we're going to call this AX front right. 
Um, we're gonna take its transform and set it up so it's the same as the right, 90. We're gonna change axle front right, so the constrained body name. Um, let's make that one invisible too. That one's not visible, that one's not visible. So front right, so um, that's constrained perfectly fine. Uh, make sure that the Z axis is um, free and everything else is locked. Then we'll do the wheel. So we'll duplicate wheel front left. We'll go wheel front right. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. No, I, yeah, okay, I'm just being confused. <laughs> um, so again, um, for this one, make sure that the Y axis is free and everything else is locked. And then just change to front right and axle front right. Like so. So if everything works fine, we should have a rolling um, car as of right now. And we got something going wonky on the front wheels. So that is obviously a collision issue. Let's see what we did wrong. Disable collision, disable collision, disable collision, disable collision. Disable collision, disable collision. Something is colliding wrong. Wheel rear right, rear left. Wheel rear right. Bodies, everything is ignoring it. Everything's simulating physics. I'm thinking it might be the axles. I'm gonna delete those quick and see if that's it. Play. Yes, it's the axles most definitely. So I'm gonna undo that. Uh, something to do with the collision, I would imagine. So let's uh, let's try ignoring physics body and pond as well. Compile, save, play. Let's just find out what it is here. Um, I believe world dynamic is the type it has to be and ignore I might have to check my other settings compile save play our wheels are set to wheels right so yes object type wheel 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 and it's ignoring everything that it should Try world static. Might have to look at my setup, other setup. Okay, so with my setup, what I have is my axles are set to object type wheels, collision enabled, custom, and I've got it set to block everything except for bodies and wheels. Let's see if that fixes it. Compile, save, play. Yeah, now it looks fine, except for the wheels are still freaking out for some reason. Let me figure out why that is quickly. Okay, so I believe it's because um, our axles here are blocking the world. I forgot to set them to ignore the world. So um, compile and save that, and it's still freaking out. Um, some things I realized I missed go to body and set everything to block or everything to ignore sorry except for our trace channels and world static and world dynamic compile that right wheel is still going funky for some reason um so we're gonna go wheels um or we're gonna go yeah all the wheels um Make sure they have the right one. So they should be wheels, um, block everything, except for wheels and bodies. Make sure our body set to bodies. Um, our axles, they should be set to, block everything except for, world static and world dynamic 
That is very odd. I'm gonna try just remaking wheel front right. When you delete that, it works perfectly fine, except for those axles are still colliding with the world. So what would that reason be? Might have to do something either, something, something weird with these possibly. This didn't happen to me last time. All right, I don't know what's going on. Let's just set it up, block, ignore everything. World static, world dynamic, uh, bodies and wheels. Let's see if we can't make this work and just drag them up above the body. So let's go like 50. Let's see if that should, that'll should that still work. So I'm gonna add my wheel front right in again. So duplicate rear right, wheel front right, oops. Wheel front right and change its value, 125. So let's see how that's looking. Pretty funky. Something is gone wrong with collision in this case. Okay, I found the issue. Uh, the wheel front right uh, constraint I apparently had in the front left wheels position. So I set that to 90 in the Y. And... Um, our axles, I forgot, should also be locked in, uh, well, in every way at first, because we're going to unlock them through blueprints when we need to steer. And for some reason, it wasn't even all that um, body. Uh, the axles, I also just set to ignore everything. Um, all I did was deleted the car and then placed it back in the world, and it seemed to work just fine. So, um... Except for my camera, I gotta re-enable that. But um, as you can see, it's uh, it's sitting on the wheels just fine now. I can I can move it along. As you can see, uh, a little bit of friction, but the wheels are rotating. Maybe if we can, uh, you can just make them out rotating. But yeah, they are working. So that is all good. So how do we make it drive? So we're gonna go um, input axis, move forward. Now it is easier just to go um, to add um, inputs for W and S, but uh, I'm just gonna work with the stock ones to make it easier. It's a little bit less work to do it the other way just to have um, the key presses, but this works just fine. So how do you add, how do you make a rear wheel drive car go forward? Well, you add torque to the rear wheels. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the uh, we're gonna take the rear wheels, so rear right and rear left, and we're gonna take the axis value. We're gonna check double equal. If it's equal to zero, we're gonna go into a branch. Then we do nothing because um, when you're not pressing W or S, move forward gives you a value of zero. When you're pressing W, you get a value of one. So we're gonna check if it's equal to one. That means we wanna go forward. So if it's equal to one, we'll go into another branch. So if it's not zero and equal to one, um, actually you could even do that as an and boolean. And I think that would work, should. So if it's not equal to zero and equal to one, it true. Then what you would do is add torque. Now I find add torque doesn't work so well, so I'm gonna show you the way I prefer. So we're gonna add torque and we're gonna add it to wheel right and rear wheel left. And just take the torque value, right click, split struct pin. Um, we want acceleration change true torque y because it's in the y axis we're going to right click we're going to promote that to variable and we're going to call this uh engine engine torque and hit f7 to compile so by default it's going to be zero we need a few other variables we need current gear and this is going to be an integer um we're going to need 
torque per gear. It's going to be just a linear. You add additional torque per gear. Um, hit F7. I find a good value is uh, about 50 to play with. Um, current gear and cur engine torque should be zero. Um, so what we can do now is we, oh yeah, we also need a way to switch gears. So let's uh, go, I'm going to use the Q and E keys. So E, way up in the keys. This one's always a bitch to find. E, there it is. So Q, um, when pressed, we're going to set or we're going to take current gear. Uh, Q is going to decrement. And E is going to increment. And what we're also going to do is we're going to set engine torque when we change gear. So we're going to set, so hold down Alt and drag it in. Set engine torque to current gear times or sorry, plus um, torque per gear when we when we um, press E. So when we gear up, so we actually want that value rather. So that so our gear by torque per gear. I can't see. I need to move these. And when we gear down, we subtract um, that value minus torque per gear. No, I totally did that wrong. I was right. Um, we want that value. times oops not times float that value times integer times integer times torque per gear becomes engine torque so if it's one it would be 50 if it's two it would be 100 I'm not thinking so straight today so we're gonna do the same down here we're just gonna go um, current gear times torque per gear into engine torque Compile, save, and to check that, let's go to our widget HUD. We can fill those values in now. So let's go to and just drag off of BP Simple Car and get uh, torque engine text. And we want to get uh, torque, get engine torque, and let's plug it into torque. And let's just change this. We want maximum one fractional digit. And then uh, get gear text. We just want to get current gear and plug that into gear. And so now when we compile and save and play, we should be able to press E to go up and W to go down. And we should be setting engine torque as well to itself times torque per gear, which is 50. Why is that not updating in get engine torque text? Engine torque, torque. Oh, cause I didn't set that. Take engine torque and bind it to that. That's what I forgot. Compile, say the little things, play. So engine torque, zero net, uh, Newton meters, 50, so on and so forth. So we have, we have that set up and when we move forward um let's uh let's check that so um i'm just gonna hit play move this out of the way so it's obviously giving us false because we're not holding down a button when i press w um in game it does not give us true so that is not gonna work we do need the second branch so let's just move this over the branch get rid of this and boolean that gate does not work so we want this one if it's not equal to zero so false we go into this and if it is equal to one then we add torque so let's compile save let's just test it so we should see obviously nothing and then it should go through this branch and add torque when i press w 
which it does. Right now it's adding nothing. So let's see if that works at all. So we'll play, we'll get our camera set up here. We'll look at our wheels or whatever. We'll press W so that we're getting torque and we'll gear up. So as you can see, gear one, we move very, very slowly, but our wheels are moving. As we gear up, we get more and more speed. And you can go till your wheels start spinning like that and then do crazy things. But we do have a car that drives and you can go in reverse too, obviously. So at its most basic level, that is how you set it up. Um, once we get more advanced, we will use a, a uh, curve and then we'll be able to call this like engine torque, whoops. Uh, engine torque curve and we'll be able to create a proper engine torque curve where we can say you know um, right here it's whatever right here it goes up you know right here it peaks and then it goes and stays there and then it goes down a bit at the end so a proper torque curve um, we will will actually do that once we get more advanced and we'll use that value to actually set the engine torque um but for now this works in that way now we need to set steering so what we need to do is we need to um uh we need axis move right so first we need to figure out which one is which so let's just do a print string and the axis value so just so we know which is which so D should be one. So yeah, D is one, S is negative one, perfect. So let's just say D equals right plus one, A equals left, negative one, none equals zero. So we wanna go into a branch and check if it's equal to zero, like usual, then we do nothing. Um, obviously but if false we go into another branch and we check if it is equal and this will do both left and right um if it's equal to and you can do uh one or negative one it doesn't matter i'm just going to do one so if it's equal to one so t equals steer right and false equals steer left so if true we need to steer right how do we do that well our our ax axle um whoops our axle um constraints they're set to lock in every single limit so we need to bring those we need to unlock those so axle front right axle front left we need to unlock those so how do we do that well if we look at their details angular limits so what we want to do is we want to set and set angular limits so we want to set angular swing one motion so one limit so what we're going to do is we're going to set that to be um limited not totally free and we want to limit that to uh whatever steering angle you want let's go with 45 degrees see how that works and we want to do that for both of these so you can plug them both in so that'll allow the wheels to turn then we need to somehow turn them so we can do the same thing we can take wheel front right and wheel front left and we can add torque but this time when we split that so we're going to right click on torque and split um, and we'll do acceleration change true we want torque Z so this is going to be let's promote it to a variable this is going to be steering torque because later we're going to go ahead and make a steering curve so that the longer you hold it down the more torque you put into steering it allows you to uh, get fire steering I, uh, I'm going to set this to like 500 I think compile save let's see if that works the best way to test this take your body set it to static for now it'll, and it'll get stuck in the air save and then bring it up in the air play as you can see it'll be up in the air but everything else will still work as you can see i could steer right but i can't 
it won't it doesn't do anything else it just obviously sets that and i guess it slowly centers itself but uh and i can move forward so this is another good way to uh test your uh test your um gearing and such so i can still move forward i can turn right so now we need to do left so to do left is exactly the same. We set angular swing one limit on both of the axle constraints to limited 45 degrees. And then we add torque. But if we add the same amount of torque, we're gonna get, we're gonna steer to the right again. So how do you do that? Um, you can't negate, I guess you can negate a float. Ha, huh. go figure. Well, we'll just try that out. We'll negate the float and plug that in. Basically, you just want the negative value. Usually what I do is I set steering torque to its negative value, and then I just use the absolute um, pure function. But we'll try and negate float. I totally forgot about that. And this obviously needs a target, and the target is wheel front right and wheel front left. Compile, save, let's test this out. So I got right and left. As you can see, it's a little hard going to the left. And I've played around and I've thought that maybe negative 45 is the way to go with that. And um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We got right and we got left. Then it doesn't do anything, but sometimes it does. See, then the right steer to the uh, left. So it's, it's a little bit wonky in the way it works. Um. We could go and go into a branch and check if access value is equal to uh, negative one. And it just takes some tweaking is really all it is. I don't trust that negate float either. So I'm gonna do a, uh, actually we can just plug the values right in just to be sure to torque 500. We don't know which way it's working exactly. And because wheel front right is gonna be rotated, that actually might cause issues too. Something I didn't think about. Um, and negative 500. In fact, let's just try wheel front left, which we know works fine. Save, play. So we steer to the left nothing steered to the right it works left nothing so right works but left doesn't so if it's equal to negative one let's just make sure that's working properly first of all so I have right and left okay perfect so let's try um, 500 torque this time and see if that does it. It's all tweaking the values when it comes to physics. So we have right and no left still. So negative 500 torque. And let's set the steering limit to 45. So we have right and we have left. So there we go, it's working just fine. So I think that's the reason is because this is rotated, we need to do the inverse on that. So we need to add torque to these wheels independently. Now, if your wheels are don't need to be rotated, in fact, we can, because who cares what it looks like? Let's just take these wheels. Um, where are you front right? Let's just, okay, never mind. I didn't even have it rotated, did I? Oh, not the axle, the wheel. Front right, let's set that to zero and now we should be in business. We can just plug that right in. And also if it's equal to zero, then we wanna set our angular swing limit back to locked. So it'll always set it to locked zero degrees. Um, 
when it's equal to zero. Make sure that is well. Totally forgot about that. Compile, save. Oh yeah, that needs to be plugged into um, axle front right, axle front left. Compile, save, play. We should be pretty good now. So we have left, we have right, and when we let go, it immediately goes back to center. So let's see how it drives. So let's play. Of course, forgetting to re-simulate physics on the body, so set it to movable and simulate physics. Compile, save, save everything. Play, this will be a good test for your constraints. You can see they're pretty sturdy. So now, maybe I'll go from this side because it looks better. We should be able to gear up a bit, move forward and steer. Now, when you steer, it is gonna decrease the amount of torque um, going forward since it screws up the axis, axes. So you wanna increase the torque as your steering angle increases. Um, it also has to do with friction. So that's something you have to look at if you're going, that's why a basic car is just kind of more for experimenting. Also rear wheel drive might not help and our wheels currently have no physical material attached to them. That's why they're spinning so much. But yeah, we can drive and turn in the most basic sense. And apparently go backwards, perfect. So yeah, as you can see, physics can be extremely, extremely weird and very funky, but it can be done. So we'll get into more advanced cars where we use proper torque curves and such, and um, where we increase torque as we uh, increase our steering angle, and uh, we'll see where we get to. Um, the best thing you can do is probably make like a 15 degree steering angle top. That'll help. Also go to your meshes, um, go to your wheel and under simple collision physical material, we want non-slippery. There should be a wheel one too, but that should help big time too. Um, then your rear wheels will actually have friction, so they won't spin, but it means your front wheels will have friction too. So they should steer better. And as you can see, the rear wheels can bug out. That's why I prefer just one last thing is for moving forward. Um, you can add torque or you can add angular impulse. Velocity change, yes. And we want impulse, Y. And another thing we'll do in the advanced car is we will actually get the proper vector to add impulse. Um, Cause just adding engine torque times steering angle is just hackish. You wanna add in um, a specific vector. You want the wheels why normal essentially but that should work a little bit better sometimes it works better fine sometimes it doesn't so yeah as you can see that really like my 50 value is extremely high now but i find that that works a lot better it gives better um better power if you will although as you can see it gets um, when you steer backwards, then now forwards is backwards and backwards is forwards. So that's where we need proper vectors and not just axes. But we will get to that in a more advanced video. So I'm going to leave it there. That is a physics constraint built car. Absolutely no um, C++ classes needed, all blueprinted. And uh, somewhere to start if you want to make a car game and start working with physics. So yeah, hopefully um, that helps some people out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you learned something, please like the video, subscribe. We also take donations at paypal.me slash blendertech. If you dislike this video, please tell us why. So we'll see you next time. Remember, create your way.